Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Flycast Partners presentation. My name is Rich Longo, and I am your host. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your very busy schedules to join us for today's webcast on knowledge management presented by BMC's very own Matt Crowder. And it looks like we have quite the audience today. I want to welcome everyone from Alaska. We have a person from Hawaii and New York and California and Florida and just every state in between. Wow, we have quite the audience. So thank you. It's very much appreciated. And hopefully we'll all learn a great deal on knowledge management today. Now, a little bit about Matt. Matt is in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina and is a solution engineer for BMC Software. His mission is to help organizations like yours become cognitive enterprises and reach your next level of service management excellence. So he's going to show us a few use cases today to help get you there. And before we get started, Matt, let me introduce Flycast Partners. Flycast Partners offers best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, IT security, enterprise service management, and workload automation spaces using ITIL best practice. Our professional services team has well over 5,600 professional services engagements, both on site and remote, which is important as we've gone through a year of pandemic. Remote is pretty important to most organizations out there. As an organization ourselves, Flycast Partners has well over 1,200 regular customers all throughout Canada and the United States. I encourage you to reach out to us at 844-FLYCAST, that's 844-359-2278, or visit our website and talk to our folks through chat Monday through Friday during normal business hours. That's from 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. They're there to help you out with training, to get you data sheets and white papers, help you get that remote administration services, even L1 and L2 support that we offer here at Flycast. I also encourage you to email us at info at flycastpartners.com. Now, during today's webcast, Matt has agreed to go ahead and take your questions live. That's correct. So if you will simply type your questions in the Q&A section of this GoToWebinar platform, I'll read those off at the appropriate times during today's presentation. And Matt is going to try and answer as many of those today as time will allow. So without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to you, Matt. I have slid the controls over to you, sir. Perfect. All right, so for our attendees today, I am gonna to go through a couple of slides. I promise this is not going to be death by PowerPoint. I do wanna focus a majority of our time in the actual demonstration itself. And as Rich mentioned, please, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. So just to kind of get us started, what is the Calm Around solution? Calm Around is one of the most powerful knowledge management solutions in the industry right now. And one of the special things about Comround and what makes Comround such a powerful tool is its ability to pr provide knowledge articles to virtually anybody, whether they're inside of your organization or external customers. So they can, add, they can gain access to content from virtually anywhere. But why is having a specific knowledge management tool important? Well, that's because a lot of customers and a lot of the people I talk to, they have different content everywhere. They have three or four different portals to find different types of information, whether it's IT information, HR, facilities, you name it. And Comround really brings all of those different sources into one single database that can be easily consumed. So when we're talking about Comround, it is KCS6 verified. And the KCS knowledge-centered service methodology is really based on making knowledge management a central part of your organization and improving upon your knowledge base through data-driven analytics. So if we're taking a look at the wheel, the, in, the most inner wheel, so we have knowledge that we publish to our external users. It's then consumed by the community and by using analytics and getting feedback, from our customers, either internal or external, we collect that data and that gives us insights on how we can bolster up that knowledge and make it better. 
So Glucom Around is built on progressive web app technology. And really in simple terms, all that means is you're able to access the content from virtually any device. And it's going to look and feel the exact same. You won't have to train your users to use this solution, whether you're on a mobile phone, tablet, or your desktop view. It's all exactly the same user experience. Also with Comaround's extensive background in knowledge management, we do have KCS certified trainers. We're one of the only solution providers that has in-house KCS trainers that can help your organization achieve their optimal knowledge management goals. In addition, we also have over 100,000 pre-built articles that you can use on day one. There's actually some of our customers that have purchased the solution simply for the pre-built content. They had no intention of, of making their own knowledge, but they're just consuming the article packs that teach their new business owners how to use various tools such as Microsoft Teams or Photoshop, or if you wanna be a professional on PowerPoint, we have thousands of articles. So we're actually going to be talking about a couple of different use cases. The first one is going to be Electrolux. Now, when I mentioned that Comround can be customer facing, Electrolux is one of our flagship customers. And so they have, they operate in over 30 different countries in 34 different languages, and they support millions of people across the globe. The next one that we're actually going to be seeing a piece of during our demonstration is how Volvo Cars of Sweden leverages the solution and how Comround has helped them increase their net promoter score and train their employees faster. And the last one, beating media market, this is just to prove that we are an enterprise level solution and we can work with even the largest organizations. So media market leverages our solution to support their 62,000 employees across 14 different countries. So part of the KCS methodology, it's of course going to be all about the data, making sure that we have data-driven insights and it's seeing where our customers are accessing the data What's the rating of the articles? Are we having complete articles with a full th thought through content? And then we have a built-in reporting module that I'm going to be showing you during the demonstration as well. But before we go into the demonstration, I do just want to point out, it is a completely customizable portal as well from the look and feel. So you, you can have your different logos, so what we're going to be seeing today is kind of a stock environment with a Comaround logo, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can integrate it to your different web pages so that your external customers can access it, as well as make it look and feel like your company. So during the demonstration, we're going to be walking through a few different steps. We're going to be taking a look at the two user interfaces, that for the end users and the knowledge workers, where we're actually going to be creating content. And I'll be showing you how easy it is to manage the content once it's built. Do a quick walkthrough of our article quality index. That's how we're going to be ranking our articles and making sure that our knowledge workers, our content creators, are having those full thought out knowledge articles that are going to be useful to our end users. Then talking a bit about the business intelligence, and briefly covering the administration piece. So with that, we're actually going to jump right on in into our demonstration. So I did mention Electrolux a little bit earlier, and what we're looking at is the Electrolux UK support website. So they are a huge customer outside of Europe, and what we're going to be doing is actually using Comaround through one of our customers portals. And I really like this use case and it's actually really personal to me is I'm a recent homeowner. I bought my, my first home about a year ago and I'm having to do all the homeowner things like maintain my washing machine. And it actually, mine actually went out about a month and a half ago. And unfortunately I am not an Electrolux customer. So what ended up happening is it took me about two hours to try to figure out what was wrong with my washing machine. Why wouldn't it start? 
and after I had read through all the manuals and things of that nature, probably took me another 15 to 20 minutes just to book a repair, a, a repairman to come through and help me out. So we're going to be walking through that exact use case and show you how easy it would have been had I been an Electrolux customer. We have two different ways that we can search for content, either using our search bar or we have these various folders in the icons down here. For my particular example, we're having a busted washing machine. Well, the thing just wouldn't start. And as we click on this folder, we're brought up with recommended knowledge articles. These are going to be changing. And as I've done this use case a couple of times, I've actually seen these various items change and move around. But the reason they're recommended is these are the most searched or most accessed knowledge articles within the past 30 days. But I don't really see anything that's going to help me figure out why my washing machine wouldn't start. So we can actually narrow down the search. And right here in the middle, we have a knowledge article that may help me with my issue. So Electrolux is a, like what we're looking at is a knowledge is a knowledge article that's actually living within Comaround that's being accessed through the Electrolux portal. So it's following the KCS methodology of following through the steps of issue, the different resolutions. And I actually walked through these first two steps when I was doing my own search, but it actually still wouldn't start up. So they have this third option down here, contact an authorized service center. So it took me two hours to find, and we were able to find in less than 30 seconds by using the Comround solution. But Electrolux has actually taken it one step further to where I could actually book a repair directly within the knowledge article or order these spare parts if that was if it was something that I could have fixed on my own. So Electrolux not only credits Comround for providing a delightful end user experience, but also an increase to their sales as well. Because these knowledge articles are public facing, it keeps them at the very top of the Google algorithm. So they've seen a direct increase in sales since they've started leveraging the solution. We're now going to be taking a look at a customer or the end user portal. This is where most of the people in your organization are going to go to access the content that they need. So what I've shown you is how we can search for a knowledge article like we did in Electrolux through different folders or using the search bar. But there's one more way that we can actually find content that, that we're looking for. And that's through our decision trees. This is going to take me through a guided experience to find the content that I need. So if we're going to take a look at the example of my favorite mode of transportation, it's going to pop up a few different options. If we select motor vehicles, we can say that we want to take a look at an electric car or electric vehicles. And that's actually going to bring me to a knowledge article. So this is just one of the endpoints that our decision trees can help us get to. But if we were to go back and select the other option, it doesn't have to be a knowledge article. We can also extend this out to various web pages as well. So if there was content that was already ready to, that was already meeting your needs, if you had an issue with your Dell laptop, this could be a link to the Dell website. No reason to recreate the wheel. Just take your users to the exact place that's going to help them get the help that they need. So down here at the bottom, we do have our trending articles, but there's one addition that wasn't on the Electrolux page as well. And that's promoted articles. And these are articles that have been flagged by the administrators of the knowledge workers. So if you want to do a public broadcast to your organization, you can create an article and put it into this promoted categories page. So when your end users come to this site, this is they're going to see the exact content that they need to be aware of. Some organizations use this to help their end users sign up for uh, sign up for um, charity events and things of that nature. So you could say, sign up for St. Baldrick's organization. That's in one of the charity organizations that I really like supporting. I shave my head for it every year. So 
let's take a little, let's take a peek at some of the pre-built content. Oh, if we were doing a training session on Calm Around and each one of you had your own environment that we could, we could play in, well, most likely I'd probably set up a training like that in Microsoft Teams. And this is something I've actually done myself. I've never set up the together mode in Teams or setting out the breakout rooms. So if we go into our different meetings, we have a knowledge article about setting up together mode in Teams. And what we're going to notice is the knowledge articles are embedded with rich text format. So whatever types of colors, fonts, shapes, sizes, images, and even videos can be embedded as well. So however your users want to consume this information, they have that flexibility. And we also make it extraordinarily easy to navigate to like to articles that are similar to each other. So because we're talking about different meetings and teams, we have access to the other content that's within this folder, and we can easily navigate through it as well. But one of the things that really makes Comround such a powerful solution is the language translation feature. So you'll notice right here up top, we are searching in English, but if this wasn't my native language and I wanted to read it in the na my native tongue of Arabic, I have that option as well. So everything within the article is going to be translated except for the images and a few of the key tags that are going to help us filter through various articles. So Rich, I just want to stop here for just a second and see if we've had any questions come in. Good. Not so far, Matt. We do not have any questions, but we have a sizable audience today. So folks, let's go ahead and get those questions in. Uh, go ahead and type in those questions in the question section of this GoToWebinar, and I will read those off for Matt. Uh, but for right now, we don't have any questions. As they come in, I'll go ahead and, and read them off. So folks, don't be shy. Type those questions in for us. Appreciate it, Rich. So I've shown you how easy it is to search for various types of content and the different ways we can do it. But what happens if we search for something that doesn't exist within our knowledge base? So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to say popcorn because I know for a fact there is no content in this environment related to popcorn. So just like I expect, nothing pops up. And we have the ability to set alarms. So what's called a no search hit. And because nothing popped up, that's actually going to send an automated email letting us know that there's been a no search hit. And this is a way to have stronger data integrity. If your end user ser are searching for content that doesn't exist, we let you know about it. So you can create that content and have a more full knowledge base to help your end users. So now that we've taken a pretty decent look at the end user portal, let's go ahead and transition into our knowledge worker console. This is where we're actually going to be creating new content. So you'll notice that the look and feel is very much the same, but instead of having different windows, we have different flyouts. So if we wanted to navigate to that same article from Microsoft Teams and how to share different or how to do together mode, we could easily navigate it. It's just a little quicker experience so that your knowledge content creators can access the articles they're looking for in a very easy fashion. There's also one additional selection down here at the bottom, and that's called news. So if you want to make your knowledge content creators aware of a particular update, or just let them know that we're maybe acquiring a new product and we're going to have to start creating content. You can set the, that news update right here. So when it comes to actually creating content, it's really simple to do. And just for full transparency, I do have a little template that I just wanted to show you real quick. So you guys don't have to watch me typing in all of this stuff manually. So we're going to be creating a new knowledge article that's going to help our end users find their archived email folders. And so if we want to change this, we have two different types of templates. So our standard template, which just offers a resolution. And if we want to have internal notes on the article, we can do that as well. 
But if we want to make it a little bit more robust, we can use our KCS template, which is going to open up a few more fields for us. So what we're going to do now is now that we've gotten some data in here, we're going to go ahead and move this to a draft stage. This is part of the KCS methodology of having different life cycles for our knowledge articles, as well as different user roles. So the way the different user roles play out is as we go down this list, we gain more features and more abilities. Is we don't want just anybody to have access or have the to have the ability to delete content. So we reserve that for our highest user rights, which is going to be coaches and managers. So as a knowledge worker, we're not always going to be completing content in the exact moment. So now that this is in a draft stage, we can actually go about our business and move on about our day. But if we wanted to come back to this article later to complete it and fill it out, we can do that very easily from our content editor. So this is where we're going to be managing our different folders, even creating new articles, folders, things of that nature. So in our new content article, you'll notice we have a knowledge article for popcorn, as well as the one that we just created for finding archived emails. But just for fun, let's take a look at that popcorn article. So as you remember from the end user portal, nothing popped up for popcorn. And we got that automated email alert. But we also have a placeholder that's created this article for us. So you'll notice it says created by an automated alarm. If we want to start filling this out right now, we could. But let's go ahead and finish that archive email. So we do have a placeholder for a video. So in addition to the rich text formatting, we also have a built-in video recording tool as well. If we already had a video created that would help guide our end users, we can certainly insert it or we can record in real time. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So it does take just a couple of seconds. I believe uh, my future wife is probably on her computer as well, eating up my bandwidth. So my apologies for any of the delays. But now that we've formatted this article for the screen, we're going to have the ability to record our various content. So if we want to record our screen, we can actually guide our end users to show them where to find their archived email folder. So we can just let them know in Outlook, it's going to be right under their delete section. And here's my archived emails about calm rounds or benefits for having a separate management software solution. That's really all we're going to need to show for our end users. And after we've so we are done, we are good to go with that content. We actually have the ability to edit the content as well, just to trim a little bit of the fat off. And just like that, now we have our embedded video that's going to show our users exactly where their archived email folder is. And if we wanted to add some tags, we could do that as well. These are just going to help our users filter out various bits of data.
Now, if you have any type of specific content that's frequently updated, so a lot of organizations have the problem that their knowledge articles get outdated. We do have the concept of periods of validity as well. So if we wanted to just say that this article is going to be current for the next month and a half, we can apply that. And once we hit our end date, we're actually going to receive a notification that this article needs to be checked and make sure that it's current and accurate. So now that we have our fully com completed article, we can move that into our published phase, and that's going to make it accessible for our end users. Now, if we wanted to add it to a particular folder, all we have to do is a quick drag and drop. So now in our end user portal, as I switch back, our in facing customers will be able to find that article with ease. So whenever you publish an article, it becomes available to your end users immediately. And here's our video. And we can even look for different types of tags related to Outlook or our search as well. So since we have our auto-generated popcorn article, we can either start creating content or adding additional features to that. But what if we have three or four different articles that we want to upload related to popcorn? Well, we do have the feature that's called multi-article imports as well. So we can import one document and it can create folders and even separate knowledge articles. So by uploading one Word document, you'll notice that we created a new folder as well as two different knowledge articles as well. So if we want to take a look at our history of popcorn, this one's full of a lot of text. And if we wanted to make this searchable in Spanish, we could do that as well. With just a quick click of a button, the entire article has been translated for us with absolutely zero effort. We want to make sure these are going to be accessible to our end users. But if we know that the content is already good to go and we don't want to make any adjustments, we can also easily change the knowledge states. Just like that, we've made our article for best popcorn brands published as well. So now let's try that same search again in the end user portal. So if we say popcorn, let's see what actually pops up for us. And here we have our newly built article embedded with pictures and all sorts of text as well on our top popcorn brands, number one being Pop Secret, or Redenbachers. And this one actually kind of surprised me, but Kroger was the third highest rated popcorn brand. So I thought that was pretty neat. So now that I've shown you how easy it is to manage your various content, now we're actually going to be taking a look at our article quality indexes. So let's do go ahead and make some adjustments or rate our article for our best popcorn brands. So this is going to be for somebody like a, a coach or a manager, somebody with higher permissions than people are there just creating the general content. Because we want to make sure that our knowledge articles are going to be complete. And that's where the AQI comes in, the Article Quality Index. And it really is just a quick survey to let us know, is it unique? I'd say that certainly is unique. Complete has all the information we need, that it's clear, reflects the title, and if there were any links, that they were valid and went to the area that we wanted them to go to. And so now we have our content creator. It's ranked saying that one of the articles that he created is going to be 100%. So that's a piece of the gamification of the solution. So by giving feedback, we can actually 
assess which users are providing the best content. And as far as we, uh, and as we want to make the article pop up in those recommended tabs or show up in the newsfeed, we can easily do that here. So now as we go back, we're going to see our best popcorn brands is now in our newsfeed right here at the bottom. So before I start getting into the business intelligence piece, Rich, I just wanted to stop for another second. Any questions come in? Okay, I'll take silence as golden. So I'm actually going to be going to a separate environment, one that has a little bit more data in it, because I think that's going to be a big help when we're talking about business intelligence. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Okay, uh, we do have a question. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with the mic here. Uh, they Justin wants to know how accurate is the translation feature of Come Around? It's it's fairly accurate. It does le leverage Google Translate, so as accurate as as Google Translate can be. Of course, there are going to be certain words or phrases that won't meet the exact um, maybe region. If we're talking about Spanish, for example there's a ton of different dialogues so it, it will be kind of let's say generic but it will get the point across and just to backtrack for just a moment that's actually why we have the ability to have to publish the article in multiple different languages so if we're looking at our best popcorn brands or probably a better example our history of popcorn this was an article that we actually published in Spanish as well. So the reason we allow you to publish articles in different languages is if you want to make any translations so it is a little bit more accurate, you can manage the content independent or you can manage the article independent of each other for the different languages. I hope that answered your question. Getting... And if not, please let me know. I'd love to elaborate further. But now that we're into our business intelligence side, we do have some stunning reports. These are out of the box, and you get to actually see where in the world your users are accessing the different content. So here I am sitting in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we see that there's one unique user. That user is actually me, as well as are my various friends and coworkers across the globe. But if we want to take a look at each individual who's creating content, might have timed down on me, do a quick refresh. We can see which one of our employees has been creating the most content. So Therese is number one at the top. And so because she's been creating such quality content and making knowledge accessible to our end users, this is also a part of the gam gamification piece. So we can say, Therese, great job. We're gonna give you a $15 gift card to Starbucks this week. But it doesn't just stop on how many articles you create. We can also assess the, the quality of the articles as well by user. And this is going to help us figure out who's creating the best content that's getting the highest ratings. So you'll notice my friend Silka, she has a 90% approval rating of her article quality index score. Whereas Per maybe isn't doing so hot. His articles are averaging around 50%. So that just might mean that there could be a gap in Per's knowledge of creating knowledge. So we might want to team Silka up with Per so she can help him create better content that'll be more liked and consumed by our end users. So the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is the amount of shares or actually how about visits? Because what it really comes down to is are your users being able to access the content that they need? 
So for this example, if we were seeing that a majority of our users are in the Northeast of the US, and we're getting a lot of hits to our website and a lot of consumers from that end, if we were a company like a telecom organization, well, that might give us an, an alarm or let us know there could be an issue with our service because we're getting increased hits in the Northeast, but maybe our service in the Northwest are doing just fine. So then we could go and assess the health of our services for our end customers. So when we're talking about the views of the different articles, these are going to be our articles that are getting the most used. And so for an example, a large manufacturer actually uses this feature specifically to figure out where they can have process improvements. They create different types of uh, tractors and machinery, and they notice that articles related to fixing the tread on these tractors was getting a high hit. Well, that could let them know as an organization that maybe they need to improve something about their machinery. And once they did, they actually saw a decrease in the amount of art or in the amount of times that that specific article was searched for because they were able to get those data driven insights and fix it. So the users didn't actually have to search for self help. So now that we've taken a look at our business intelligence slide. The last piece we're going to be taking a look at is our administration tool. So not only is it very easy to use, it's incredibly simple to administer as well. We can have different user groups and we can even have different levels of permission. For example, if your IT users didn't need to see access to knowledge articles that were created specifically for HR, we can have different user groups and segment the data so that the end users or consumers are only receiving content that's going to be relevant to their job and their role. When we're taking a look at our portal settings, this is where we're going to do some of our basic administration, setting up the names for the portal, allowing us to publish in different languages and just to be clear on this, these are just languages that we can publish the articles in, but regardless of what they're published in, you still can do the full text translation in over a hundred different languages, regardless of if these are enabled or not. And if we wanted to adjust any of the names of the KCS templates, if we wanted to change the issue to problem, we could easily do that simply by typing problem. But when it comes to actually customizing or branding the environment, it's real simple to do as well. We can add a variety of different colors, add separate logos in different images, and they can be separate for the knowledge worker interface or within the self-service interface as well. Now we do also have integrations to Microsoft Teams as well. So if your organization uses Teams, your users would be able to search in Teams instead of having to go to the Comround website or portal to find the content that they're looking for. But if we remember that no hit search for popcorn, that was set up through an alarm. And if we, we have two different types of alarms that we can enable, the first one being that no hit search, and we can set the amount of times that the article or that receives a no hit search before we create that automatic generated placeholder for popcorn and send that email. So we can adjust it to whatever number we want, whether it's one or 100, it's really up to you, whatever makes the most sense for your organization. But we can also be alerted when knowledge articles change states. So if I was a approver or somebody that can publish an article, I'm gonna to wanna to know whenever a knowledge article moves into the approved state. And that'll send me an email notification that I need to review the article in order to move it to the next days of published and available to our end users. But I do think the no hit search is actually one of the best features. And that's actually going to bring me to our last use case of Volvo cars. They built that no hit search into their process for their customer care center. So what we're looking at is just a PDF overview of our case study. And the graphics on the right 
all you really need to know is that at just in just one year of adopting the solution, they saw their customer care center competence levels go up and their resolution rates increased by 3% in just a single year. And their overall net promoter score went up by nearly eight or nearly seven percentage points in that same year. So they not only credit Comaround for providing a better end user experience to their customers, but allowing them to onboard new agents, new customer care agents faster as well, because it doesn't take as much training in order for them to become competent. They can search within the Calm Around solution, and because it's driven by artificial intelligence and natural language processing, they're guided very quickly and easily to the content that's going to help their overall end users. And with that, Rich, that's actually going to wrap up my demonstration. So I wanted to pause in our last few minutes and see if I can answer any final questions. Go ahead and, and type those questions in now and I'll go ahead and read those off uh, for Matt. Right now we don't have any questions, but folks, if you have any last minute questions, type those in. Uh, if you don't want to uh, type those in and get answers right now, you can email them to us at info at flycastpartners.com or you can chat with us live on our website on the little chat box in the right hand corner there standing by Monday through Friday during regular business hours on the East Coast time from 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Or you can call us at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Matt. This is the first time I've seen this tool. It's, it's pretty slick. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. It's, it's honestly been a wonderful tool for me to have as well. It, it's pretty funny. I've done a few trainings on this solution, and setting up together mode in teams or setting up different SharePoint sites to share content with the people that I'm training. It's honestly something I've never done before. So using the tool to build trainings about the tool, honestly, it just gives me a, a, a good chuckle. That's awesome. Oh, and we have a couple of comments coming in. No questions, but people thank you, thanking you for the presentation and uh, they appreciated you uh, showing everyone the tool. Uh, Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to help us today. Audience, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day. I know how hectic things can be for you there in IT. Uh, we appreciate you. So uh, definitely, if you have any questions, reach out. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Don't be bashful. Uh, once again, give us a call. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and chat with us live on our website. Uh, you can also go ahead and, uh, you know, Email us at info at flycastpartners.com. And with that, until our next uh, webcast, I'm going to wish everyone a safe and prosperous week. We'll see you soon.